Hey there everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the three biggest and most common mistakes that I see new marketers and business owners make on a regular basis. They're very simple to change and once you make these three simple changes, you're going to see a lot more benefit out of the content marketing or the ads or any kind of marketing that you're doing. So let's get into today's video. Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears and I create daily marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your business with digital marketing, then this is a great channel for you. Please consider subscribing. I again create daily marketing videos, tutorials, I talk about SEO and PPC and basically anything related to digital marketing. So if you wanna increase your business with more sales and clients, then be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. All right, so let's talk about the three most common mistakes that I see small business owners and people that are just getting started with marketing make. And it's actually really, really interesting that these same mistakes keep popping up over and over again. So the first mistake that I see people making is that they're not doing planning before they're getting started. So maybe you'll have an event coming up or maybe you'll have some kind of an offer that you want to be putting out there. When they're getting started, they just go out and they rush to create the ad and to get people going to their website. They're not doing the proper planning and thinking about who their messaging and marketing is going to be for. They don't create a client avatar. They don't create an empathy map. And so what ends up happening is that they're not really sure who the marketing is for and the, the messaging doesn't match the offer and it just is not put together well. If you're creating ads, you should be speaking to a very specific group of people. One of the beauties of digital marketing these days is that you're able to get really clear on targeting on which demographic groups you're going to be targeting which age groups you're going to be targeting what kind of education you're going to be targeting so when i start marketing the very first thing any kind of campaign or content any kind of activity that i'm doing to create marketing i'm making sure that i know exactly who this is for it needs to be for a specific group of people i actually had a call the other day with a, a potential client and she said, hey, I just want more clients. I don't care who they are, I just want more coming in. And I totally understand that. And that's the feeling that a lot of small business owners have. When they just get started, they want marketing that's gonna drive people in. But ultimately, we, we really dove down and dove deeper and we found out who she actually wanted coming in. So she was a veterinarian and that's a very common sentiment of a veterinarian, they want just more clients. But I said, if you think about it, if you're gonna be paying for these leads to come into your practice, if you're doing any kind of digital marketing, you should be doing paid advertising, in my opinion, just because it's scalable, it's predictable, and, and all of those benefits that go along with paid marketing. But ultimately, if you're going to be paying for, and if you're not doing paid, by the way, just a quick note, if you're not doing paid marketing, you're going to be spending time creating content. So if you're doing and relying on organic traffic, there's still a time that goes into that. So if you're going to spend your time, energy, and money on generating clients into your practice, who do you want to come in? And she thought about it for a second. She said, well, actually, I would like the kinds of clients that listen to what I say and that follow my recommendations and basically are good, good clients. And we dove even deeper than that, right? That sounds good to begin with, but it's still very nebulous. So she wants people that are going to treat their pets like family. Then there's definitely a different demographic of people. We have people that are pet owners and people whose pets are their kids, right? And the difference is huge as far as what they're willing to spend, the kind of compliance that you can get out of those clients and all kinds of things. So really diving deep into who your clients are is so important. And I think that not only that, but what does the before and the after look like of that client? I'll give you a few examples here. So going back to the veterinary practice, when we're thinking about who the client is and talking about like, what's the difference between somebody who treats their pet like family versus somebody who treats their pet just like a dog that's outside. Because you have both of those ranges, right? Um, when you're thinking about that, what are the goals and the values of the people that are your ideal client? If you said to somebody that was a dog owner that just treats their pet like a, a pet, in California we have laws that say you have to get them vaccinated so that they can be registered, so you can get their license and stuff. Um, so you have on one end of the spectrum people that just want to comply with the law because they have to, right? So the messaging and marketing that you create for those people is different versus on the other end of the spectrum, you have people who want the best care for their pet. They want their, their pet to have the best quality of life. They want the pet to have the most caring, empathetic, kind 
doctor that they can find. They want the best services for their pet. They want the best products. They want the best dog food. So there's a huge difference in how you relate to those clients. And I think that the main way that you do that is through emotions. So if you're talking about pet owners who absolutely love their dogs, treat them like kids. If they're working and busy professionals, for example, if you say, hey, are you feeling guilty because your pet or your dog is at home alone all day long? Like bring them to our doggy daycare, right? There's a big difference in people that leave their dogs out outside. They're just an outside dog all the time and people will take their pets to daycare. So creating content for a specific group of people, you're gonna be using very specific language. Now, one thing that I found is helpful is creating a, a client avatar. If you ch uh, check out my planner, which I'll put in the link below, I have client avatar worksheets so that you can get really clear. It has all of the questions outlined there. You can also go to amazon.com and search my name, Brandon Brashears, and you'll see my 12 month marketing digital planner. So having a very solid goal and objective on who your client's going to be, extremely important. And I see most people that have small businesses, they just completely skip this step. They think that their offer is going to be what drives the right people in. And while it's very important to have an offer that converts, it's not gonna be like you just build it and they will show up. You have to be specific on who you want to come in. Which leads us to the second part. So the second part of this is that a lot of business owners think that their service is what's going to drive the clients in, right? Their service is so great, their product is so amazing that that's going to be what makes the difference. And that is totally true. But even the best products need marketing. And when you're thinking about how to sell products to customers, if you're thinking more in lines of the features of your product, you're gonna sell a lot less than if you talk about the benefits of the product. So what is the emotional uh, problem that you're solving? Good marketing is problem solving. So how can you deliver on the dreams and the desires of your potential clients? So if you want somebody who wants, maybe that maybe you're offering tutoring for um, parents, for example, right? If you talk about yourself as the product, I'm a tutor and I went to this college and I have these degrees and these are my specialties. A lot of times, especially when tutors or people that have service businesses, they talk about how great they are. It's important to justify price and give social proof and things like that, but that's usually where they end up and they stop. If you think about the tutoring example that I just mentioned, if you're tutoring somebody, usually they want their, their kids to get the best help. Their kids are frustrated at school. They're, maybe they're being made fun of. Maybe they're uncertain about how to handle things. Maybe they're not confident. They lack confidence. So if you can go and find out what the end benefit of your service is, people need to know what that is. You need to spell it out for them. So people don't buy drills because they want a drill. They buy a drill because they want a hole. What's the kind of hole that you're selling and how can you deliver on that? And the last mistake that I see made all too often is that business owners typically when they're creating digital marketing, they're not sure kind of what the flow should be. And so depending on where they're sending out their message, there's not a clear call to action. It's not easy for the customer to say, yes, I want this. So even if they did a great job of defining who the customer was, defining what the main benefits were, let's say they had a list of people who are ready to buy, a lot of times they won't put a link to buy in their emails or they won't create a simple way for them to take advantage of the offers that they're doing. So if you have a very special offer, so let's say you're doing a carpet cleaning service and you're offering $30 off the first cleaning, then there won't be a way to call. You'll have to ask them to call, the phone number will be included in email or something, right? It's not very, very clear. So have the offer that you're creating, put it out there and have a very specific way that you want them to take action. Now think about the easiest way for them to take action and tell them exactly what to do. There should be no guessing on their part. You shouldn't be sending it to your homepage so then they have to figure out what's the best way for them to contact you. It shouldn't be that complicated. With the objectives that you have, figure out what the best call to action is and then give them an easy way to take it. So I hope, I hope this was very helpful for you. If you ever have any questions or need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Comment below if you have any other ma main mistakes that you see being made. I'd love to know what you think. What are some things that you're struggling with? I would love to help create some content specifically for you based on what you're going through right now. So thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.